everybody. Would you like to ride in my beautiful balloon? Don't you love that song? <laughs> oh, I'm sure you probably don't know that song. That one goes back to when your moms and dads were probably really little. But it's about riding in a hot air balloon. And I used to think that would be the most fun thing in the world. And then we actually got a chance to do it. And I'm going to show you some pictures from when we rode in a hot air balloon. But I um, wanted to show you this. This is a, a coat. Um, used to wear this one to school a lot. You can see my hot air balloon here. And there's a hot air balloon up here on my lapel. And down here, there's a hot air balloon. Here's a guy hanging on for dear life underneath it. That never happens really, of course. But, And then uh, another pin up here with a whole bunch of hot air balloons. I think I might have gotten this um, at the Balloon Glow in St. Louis one year. So hot air balloons are um, a lot of fun to, to look at because they usually are so pretty, like this one, for example. This one is a Christmas decoration. And you can see the hot air balloon and there's the basket underneath, but I like all the colors. So let me show you from our ride in a hot air balloon. This is the balloon that we rode in called the dogwood, and I like dogwood. We talked about that the other day. And let me show you what this looks like when they're getting the balloon ready to go up and they're putting, they're putting, we're putting it together. Turn it this way so you can see. And, okay, it's getting bigger as they put the air in it. It gets a little harder for them to hold on to. And then they start to put the fire in it and the gas that makes the balloon go up. And then eventually it stands up. And then as we were in the balloon, let me show you, oops. Okay, we went over, that's the Merrimack River. And you can see our balloon actually reflected in the water of the Merrimack River. And you can see the shadow of our balloon on the trees. So we were really high up, and what was fun is that um, the balloon captain asked us if we wanted her to let our balloon touch the tips of the trees, and we said sure. So we got to feel what that felt like, and it was a really, really neat feeling. So this one is just a short one called Hot Air Balloon Ride. I sure like to ride in a hot air balloon where we'd float overhead on a warm afternoon. I picture us floating and skimming the trees and moving along at the whim of the breeze. The ground looks much smaller as we sail along. We'll go really far because the wind is so strong. We glide over lakes where we see our reflection and pass startled birds going in our direction. Our cheerful colors will catch everyone's eye and they'll all be jealous as we float on by. When our short trip is ended and we have to land, I will have had even more fun than I planned. So I was a little nervous when we went up in our balloon, but um, once we were up there, I didn't want to come down. I was sad that the balloon had to land. And I went ahead and just for fun, um, kind of made, just with two containers and some string, made my own hot air balloon. And I've been flying my um, little silly monkey around and he can, I can zoom around the house with my monkey in a balloon. So I thought I would make my own just to see if I could do it. Pretend, of course. Okay. Next thing I want to read you, uh, or read to you about is getting mail. And have you gotten mail um, of your own where your name is on the envelope and it's actually addressed to you? Because there's something really special about that. And let me first read um, the poem to you. It's called The Letter. And then we'll talk a little bit more about that. I love to get mail addressed to me and see my name in writing. I truly think there's not a thing that could be much more exciting. When I first get the blue envelope, I'm so thrilled that this letter came. I smooth it out on the countertop using a finger to trace my name. Then I think, who may have sent it? An uncle or an aunt? I try to go by the writing, but then I realize I can't. 
So I hold it and open it slowly from end to end with care. The letter inside is perfect without a rip or tear. Once I have it in front of me, I flatten it with my palm. When I'm finally ready to read it, I have to have help from my mom. On a letter that tells me I'm loved is a name at the very end, and I'm happy to say it belongs to one of my very best friends. So getting mail from somebody telling you that you're loved or you're valued is one of the best things. And we've talked a little bit about that before, about giving notes to your parents. But actually getting mail in the mail is, uh, is a pretty cool thing too. And these are some of the things that I've gotten that I think are really uh, cool. This one's just when I think of you. This one was from my husband with an ice cream cone on it. We all love ice cream cones. This one, pretty hummingbird with stones on it, sparklies, always a good thing. And then sometimes you get cards that play music. And that was from my kids. And then this was a birthday card. <laughs> so those are fun to get in the mail too. One of the best things I've gotten in the mail lately was from somebody I love named Ella, and this was a thank you note. And she actually drew on the front, and she also drew on the inside. And she says, this is an army girl and an army boy, and this was for Girl Scout cookies that they were donating to the USO, which means a lot to, uh, to me because Charlie's daddy is in the military, and they're um, connected to the USO. So very cool, and thank you, Ella, for that. Okay, the last one I want to read today is actually um, about monsters. And um, I know that seems like you're thinking, wow, that's a, what an idea. But Charlie asked for a poem about monsters. So of course we need to do one about monsters. What if I told you there might be a monster in your closet with your toys? You could tell me that monsters don't exist to bother girls and boys. What would you say if I told you a monster munched on your new train set? You could tell me that monsters don't do that when you keep them for a pet. What if I told you that I saw a monster going down your slide? You might tell me you saw him playing and invited him inside. What would you say if I told you a monster wore your pajamas of silk? You'd probably tell me you thought it best to get him a glass of milk. And what would you say if I told you a monster was dozing in your bed? I'm sure you would tell me you left him alone and slept on the floor instead. So you just let that monster sleep on the floor. So Charlie, that was an excellent idea for a poem and thank you, that was fun to write. So thank you for listening everybody and I will see you soon. And remember one, four, three, and I will see you soon. Bye bye.